I'm Roslyn Corita, and this is History and Heritage. And today, we are at the Riverview Cemetery. Once upon a time, it was known as the City Cemetery. This is an old cemetery. This is older than Greenwood. And one of the first people buried here was Valentine Severe, one of Clarksville's original settlers. Stay with us, we have Carolyn Farrell, who knows everything there is to know about cemeteries and particularly great stories about some of the folks that are buried here. Stay with us. It's your history and your heritage. Have you ever been hungry, worried about where you're going to get your next meal? Loaves and Fishes is an organization feeding the hungry. Primarily through volunteer efforts and donations, we are able to accomplish this mission. Loaves and Fishes provides a midday meal Monday through Saturday year-round. We provide food to agencies helping the needy through our distribution program. If you would like to donate, get involved, or for more information, you can find us on the web at www.loavesandfishestn.org. Please help us with our mission of feeding the hungry. We are here with Carolyn Farrell, our expert, and this is actually the headstone of John Sevier. Valentine Sevier. Valentine Sevier. Right. You know, he I, was the brother of John, the first okay. governor of Tennessee. Very important. That is important. And you know, I think the reason I thought of that is I work in the Cordell Hull building, which is adjacent and connected to the John Sevier building. So we have a lot of Sevier's. Right. But this is Valentine. Valentine. And, and he was one of Clarksville's original right. settlers. In fact, we have done uh, stories about Valentine Sevier, Sevier Station where there was an Indian massacre. Horrible massacre. Tell us about Valentine. Valentine, again, is the uh, brother of John Sevier, the first governor of Tennessee, and he was one of the first settlers. He uh, purchased property uh, on the other side of the Red River, and on this side, he bought it from Martin Armstrong. When Martin Armstrong bought like 640 acres from uh, the state of North Carolina. So this all relates back to Revolutionary War. Revolutionary World, War times. When they gave land grants to right. those people who had served in the military. Right. So that's how this started. The, the land grant, he bought the land. Yes. Uh, so he, he settled on the other side of the river, but he bought property here. Now, the reason that this property is uh, now today a cemetery is because it's on high ground. The Indians, we, it's hard to imagine, the Indians knew that Valentine Sevier had, was the brother of John Sevier, and John Sevier was a noted Indian fighter. And so the massacre that happened on the other hill was sort of in retaliation against all that John Sevier had done. So Valentine was buried here. Um, his uh, there's a post here. We're not sure exactly. At least I'm not sure ex exactly where the grave is, but it's in this general vicinity. And the cemetery is on high ground because if you're doing a burial, your concentration is on the burial, and you want to be aware of Indians coming up and attacking you. So the cemetery was actually built on this land because of uh, the high ground. But we need to remember also, Valentine owned the land, but after his death, his son James sold the land through different owners to a James Hewling. And James Hewling gave 40 acres of it over to the city, gave it to them for the, the, the original cemetery here. So that's how it got started. Yes, yes. And uh, again, we see we have a flag because he did serve in the Revolutionary War. Yes, we so have we two of those here. Wow, so this is one of the oldest yes. in the cemetery. Yes. And I see that there's an additional uh, little marker here, and you think that's from the DAR. Well, it's the SAR, it's the Sons of the American Revolution, saying that he was a patriot. He's okay. one of the two men buried here that are Revolutionary War heroes. Okay. Now, we have so many really old gravestones. I wanted to take a look at this one right here. Um, and you said that you couldn't really tell who it was, but just looking at the style. And of course, we've talked about symbolism and the iconography, um, and immediately you said this is old. This is old by the shape of it. This is a, a classic uh, shape, and also the thinness of the monument. That and, tells you it's very old. Okay, and of course this one, 
Um, you really can't read, the, the writing is on, I think, this side. It is, but it's very, very worn you down. You really so it's can't old. read it. Um, there were also, uh, let's see, Don Montgomery's wife was buried here, and that was like in 1803, and there was another very old Bell, uh, Bell family burial here. So this, these are very old right, right here in this area. And this one here um, is very interesting. That's a little different. Right. Do you think that this was designed to be like this, or what do you think happened here? Should this be on this? It should be on the pedestal, but it, it, through time it's broken off and they have uh, laid it up there okay. so that you can identify what, who's, who's buried here. And looking at this style, how old do you think this is? Oh, this is de definitely 1800s, probably mid-1800s. Let's see if I can read that. Uh, no, you cannot read that. I can just barely see it. All um, right. We should have brought your flower and, and we'll have to remember to do that next time. So this section of Riverview Cemetery is the oldest. Probably the oldest. It goes like sections one, two, three, four, then five, six, seven, eight, and then the back a little bit, you know, the sections go that way. And then of course they added the uh, Smith Crayon section to the cemetery a couple of years back. Okay, and you told me that they actually had changed. Why don't we walk over okay. to the next one and you can be telling me as we go. Um, you said that they had changed the name of Riverview, that it, that it used to be City Cemetery. It was City Cemetery up until 1929 when they actually asked the public to give, suggest names to replace the name of the City Cemetery because people thought uh, that there were only paupers buried here, and they didn't because want that designation. It was city cemetery. cemetery. So the some of the suggested names were Emerald Hill, which of course, or Emerald Mound. Uh, uh, the one that I like is Dreamland, <laughs> uh, Cumberland Terrace, Cumberland View. But there were so many that came in that wanted it called Riverview that that was the name chosen. Okay. Now these, uh, using the things that you've taught me, these look very old. They're very old, yes. And do we have anyone that we know about in this section? Uh, not, well, a little bit further back, I was gonna talk about the, the, the family there, but uh, if we wanna look at the vault here, this is a, one of the steamboat captains that came into Clarksville. His name was A.L. Jones, and he got into a, a duel at Trice's Landing with another steamboat captain and shot and killed him. Oh. And uh, years later, he got into another duel and this time he was the one that got killed. So he's buried here in the only vault, uh, I should say recognizable vault, mm -hmm. because sometimes when you dig in old cemeteries, you find burial places you didn't know were there. Right. So I'll say recognizable, but that is A.L. Jones's uh, vault. Let's take a closer look at it's that. It's been broken into, and so they have had to put a uh, an iron slab over the front. Huh. Well, and it's right on the street Right here. on the street. Yeah. So how old do you think this one is? Oh, goodness. I, uh, it's, it's definitely 1800s. Okay. His wife remarried. She married uh, Thomas Munford very famous in Clarksville, and then when, when uh, she died, she was buried with Mr. Jones, her first husband. So he was a riverboat captain. Steamboat captain, yes. And very volatile, liked the gamble. He's a very colorful character. Well, you kind of think about that with riverboat captain. You sort yes. of have that feeling. So clearly this was broken into. Um, Gosh. This section right here is sort of a notorious area because the steamboat captains came off. We're talking about rough men that liked to gamble and were rough in their nature and so forth. And so uh, this area, especially right in here, was an area that you didn't want to come to and feel safe mm -hmm. at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So are these the stones that vandals ripped out? I mean, it looks like they were. They look like they came as part of the vault. The vault originally had doors in them, uh, stone mm -hmm. doors mm -hmm. or metal doors, excuse me, and they had a uh, little, you could actually look inside. Then they chained it, but people were still breaking in, so they had to just take the doors off. Right. What a shame that they have had to, um, that just is so. That's disturbing. That's the, it is that's, disturbing. That's desecration. And um, I don't know who the wreck singers are here, um, or the uh, pinagers. If they were had some relation, I, or I haven't been able another. to identify that. Okay. So this is the steamboat captain, and yes. you told us that there was one particular we, place you really wanted to show us. Yes, another steamboat captain, and this is a love story. I love love stories. 
So this is the place you wanted to tell us that there was a real love story. So it's a beautiful love story. Uh, the Beaumont family was very, very important. He came into Clarksville early on in its history and brought his large family. And one of his children was uh, Adeline, beautiful young lady. They bought a house where they actually built a house over on Marion Hill, which from that proximity, you could see the Cumberland River as it went around the curve. There was a steamboat captain by the name of Joseph Irwin and he was supposedly very handsome and very dapper and they fell in love. Well, Adeline would look uh, for him to come home. She had a schedule of when the boats would come in, but she would stand in her, her window and watch for the boat to come around the curve. But the thing was, steamboats in that time had very distinctive sounds when they rang their whistles or their mm -hmm. bells or whatever. And everybody in town knew that when he came around the corner and rang that, that whistle or, or, or made the sound, uh, that he, it was uh, Captain Irwin and that he was coming to see Adeline. Oh, so now what time period? This is the 1800s. I'd, again, I'd have to look it up, but, uh, but he would come and visit her, and they fell in love. Of course, they married, and they were married for a short period of time, and they had a little girl also named Adeline. Uh, this is Joseph Irwin's in-ground in grave here, and this is his wife, Adeline, the daughter of Beaumont, she died from complications from childbirth. Oh, which was so common. So common during that time. Little Adeline survived for a couple of years. Her father died, and then she died. Oh. But this is like the Nanny Tyler of, of Riverview because got a little child there praying, innocence, and I believe it says something on the front, something about our child or our, let's see. How very. Yeah, Addie Beaumont. Oh. Yes. Beautiful, Very sad. But a beautiful love story. I mean, to, to know, announce that you're coming to Clarksville by sounding off your, your right. bell and everybody in Clarksville knowing who it was <laughs> and why he was coming to Clarksville. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. Oh, and to, what a shame that they um, lost a child. Yes. He was one of the uh, steamboat captains that actually uh, piloted or ran the ship, uh, the boat called uh, the, the City of Clarksville. We had like three or four steamboats because they would blow up or wreck or whatever. Right. And he was actually one of those captains of the city of Clarksville. A, a dandy boat, they said, that was light on the water. Oh, a dandy boat. Yes. I love it. Oh. So this area then um, is, is again in the older part. Right. And there were some unusual graves over here. These are box so graves. Different. Yeah, they are box graves. And you know, you think about where people came from. Uh, these are the type of graves that you would see in a city low near the sea level. Uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. So did they have a connection with New Orleans? This was a style of, of uh, burial that they were used to. Uh, it could be. These are the, this is the McClure family, which is very, very, also very prominent in Clarksville. But they have the writing on the top. And as you can see, unfortunately, all of these have been opened for whatever reason. Oh, how tragic. And, uh, but these are the box graves. But okay. this is probably an influence from the family or somebody uh, having come from an area like New Orleans. Mm -hmm. and, and then these, we get a kind of a sense of the time period. This is uh, Hugh McClure who died in 1828. So these really are quite old. Very old, yes. Um, but these clearly are a different style. Um, right. Now this may be, and because I can't read, this may have been put here to show what this one was and this one was, or these may have replaced one that was here, but I doubt that. Uh-huh. Um, it could be. There's enough space for one. Right. It, it could be. It could be. And these, um, it doesn't look, would, would you be able, do you think, to find out using your flower technique? Yeah, I probably could. I just, that I, that I haven't done it, but you can see a little bit of the, the uh, writing there. Not very very clear. Not very clear. And but then over here, child. you know, again, we, we see um, tragically a child's coffin. Right. Uh, and it, it does look like a coffin I, or a sarcophagus almost. Right. Sort of a, uh, and then over here we have kind of one, one of the things you've taught us. Mm -hmm. um, again, the symbolism. This is a little different. Tell us about what's up here. Right. This is just a cap to an obelisk. Uh, this okay. person is from Ireland, and the Irish are very um, uh, careful of how they spend their money. So this person would not have had a lot of detail put on their on their grave. And just up the hill is the uh, Catholic Irish section. Clarksville had a lot of Irish to come in to do the railroads, to do a lot of the stone masonry that is mm -hmm. found in Clarksville. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole section over there that are the Catholics from Ireland. 
How interesting, and of course, Erin gets its name because of, of the large workers. Irish uh, influx working on the railroads. Right. How interesting. So this was someone who, and it, and it even says on here, uh, looks like it says Ireland. Um, and that is a simpler, but still within still the same. Still prestigious, yes. Yeah, but, but prestigious. Simpler. Wow. All right, so tell us where you want to take us next. Well, you can't do Riverview Cemetery without visiting Bell. All so right. we're going to go visit Bell. All right, stay with us. We're going to visit Bell. Will you become a guardian angel? The Humane Society has been saving lives and helping families since 1968. We are an independently operated nonprofit organization and the strength of our programs rely solely on donations and grants. Your donation will allow us to save animals from the local county shelter as well as provide low cost spay neuter vouchers and more. All of our programs are geared toward providing families with options that prevent them from surrendering personal or found pets which might otherwise be euthanized at a shelter. Please be a guardian angel today. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Welcome back. Now, Carolyn has another really good story, and this is one of the more unusual uh, stories about somebody buried in Riverview. So tell us, who, who had, whose stone is this? This is Belle, and this is one of those spicy stories. Belle was, we'll call her a lady of the night. We're not sure a lot about her. She could have been older. She could have been younger. She could have left her, uh, her we think she came from a neighboring county because she was shamed, you know, her parents were shamed by what she was doing. But she ended up here in Clarksville and her place of business was down on Riverside Drive, what is now Riverside Drive, what, which was once Front Street, which was once Water Street. And this is where all the steamboat captains would come off the, the boats and so forth. So her place of business was down there uh, on that in that area. On the riverfront. On the riverfront. Okay. And she was much beloved. Uh, there are several indicators that we get that this was the case because when she died, uh, she didn't have money to put this size of a headstone up in this prominent of a location. So her business manager uh, put out word that if the prominent people of Clarksville did not come to her funeral and did not help pay for the headstone, that he was going to publish the list of her visitors. Oh. And so every hack and every carriage in Clarksville was, was rented out was a, you could imagine this whole cemetery just being lined up with horse and buggy but nobody came out they kept their curtains drawn because there was also a possibility that she was the daughter of one of those prominent people of Clarksville so they made good they came to the funeral but they didn't show themselves the only person that got out of a, a carriage was the preacher who gave her funeral and so Belle is buried here and there's an epitaph here that uh, I've got written down somewhere it's hard to read here but just this alone tells you there was something about Belle that was very special to somebody. That is an interesting and spicy story, as you say. So what was the time period? I know we can't really, it looks like. Right, eight, again, I've got it written down somewhere. Looks but like it was 1872, maybe? I'm not sure, it's not, I think it's a 92, 1892. Okay. So late 1800s. Right. So that is something to imagine. All this uh, lined up with horse and buggies, even that is something to imagine that's so different now. Right, but uh, they were they were under the gun to uh, show up because they didn't want their names published for everybody to find out, especially their wives. Aha. Uh -huh. And they paid for the headstone. Paid for the headstone and attended her funeral. Oh. Now, so this section right here is, again, one of the older areas, right. and I know you told me that we have a mass burial of Confederate soldiers. Right. So let's walk down there and take a look at those. Okay. 
this is a place, we're at Riverview Cemetery, and this is a place that really, Carol, you said was a mass grave of Confederate soldiers. Right. But I sort of want to orient folks to where we are. Behind us is the Clarksville Academy. We're in Riverview Cemetery, but this is huge. So the Clarksville Academy is behind us. So now, now tell us how all of these, I mean, there are a lot of names here. Tell us what happened here. There's approximately 127 soldiers buried here during the time of the Civil War and Clarksville was occupied. The female academy was changed into a hospital and the first uh, ones that died there were from Fort Donaldson and all during the war soldiers were coming in and they were dying from things not only from their wounds but also from measles and so forth. Mm -hmm. So 127 of them buried on the grounds behind the female academy. Years later, uh, a man walking down the railroad tracks behind the academy saw some bones and then he realized that the the side, the hillside where the soldiers had been buried was washing away. So he notified Clay Stacker and stay, uh, Clay Stacker got on it. Now and who they, was Clay Stacker? Clay Stacker was, uh, he was uh, very prominent in Clarksville. He was involved in the uh, Civil War, obviously, but he also had a lot of businesses in town. Okay. He also was captain of the city guards. He was very, very involved in the keeping the Knight Riders out of Clarksville. That four-year period, 1904-1908, he kept Clarksville, so Hopkinsville was burned by the Knight Riders. He was keeping them, him and Judge Tyler kept the Knight Riders out of Clarksville. So Clay Stacker being in Forbes Bivouac, they got together and had all 127 bodies brought here and reinterred in this mass grave. And we know exactly who they were because Blanche Lewis, who lived across the street in that big mansion, which is now Gracie Apartments, worked there as a as a nurse and she kept very detailed records so now we, that is amazing that yes. we have that we have the actual names where the states are uh, what division they were in the whole the whole record how how interesting and you said that the plaque on the other side has some other different information right it honors Blanche Lewis for her work and also there were two sis there were uh, 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 two sisters the Bib, Bib sisters that work at the hospital too. There were black ladies that helped out. They caught one of the diseases. I'm thinking it was measles, but regardless, they died performing this duty of grace to these these poor men in the in the uh, in the hospital. Ah, oh, so 124, about 127 of them. Yes. And in of this course, one the spot. monument in the middle, erected by Forbes Bivouac. Now tell us, you've mentioned Forbes Bivouac a number of times, and let's kind of walk around okay. to, the, to see the rest of this monument, but tell us about Forbes Bivouac. After the Civil War, uh, a lot of the veterans felt it was incumbent upon them to honor the veterans that were left, and so they formed different bivouacs, and each bivouac was designated by the name of someone that the group of soldiers decided they wanted to name them for. So Forbes was named after William A. Forbes. He died at the Second Battle of Manassas. And uh, they named it Forbes Bivouac in his honor. And you would apply to the bivouac and they had a committee that would check and make sure that you were honorable and that you met the criteria and so forth. And it was like uh, um, they would have meetings. They would have meetings for like the decoration day, going to different reunions, making sure that the widows were taken care of, that the children were taken care of. Uh, like we had an, uh, a ch children's asylum here in Clarksville to take care of the, the orphans from the Civil War. So they were very, very important uh, after the Civil War for those type of activities. And they held their meetings for years and years and years until there's like one or two soldiers still and then they dissolved as all bivouacs dissolved when there were no more members to attend the meeting. That is great history. That, that, is, that is so interesting. So this area here is chained off and separated from the rest of the cemetery. Right. And you said that there was another place that you really wanted us to see honoring someone special. Yes. Now what we're going to do is really have you demonstrate the way that you're able to read. So show us and talk us through what you do and, and tell us what you have here. These are the weapons of cemetery hunting. This is what you want to do when you've got lichens. You want to use not a metal because we don't want to damage the stone. So I want to get as much of the lichens off as I can. And I see that the inscription is only at the top. Okay, so I'm going to take just dry flour. This is like you would have in your cupboard at home. And I'm just going to get a little dusty here. I'm going to take it and I'm going to push it into the lettering. 
and it's going to make it look like the negative of a picture. So that's there, amazing. Now, now we can read who is buried here. Alexander King. Can we see anything? Uh, is there okay. a date on it further down, do you think? Well, there's a symbol up here. Okay, in memory of Alexander King. Let's see if there's anything else further down. I do not think I saw anything, but we, we might not be able to pick up on it. So let's see if we can get anything. Now we do know that this person served in the military right, because, because we see the flag here. That's all there is. Okay, so there's not a date, but, but we went from unknown to knowing that this is this is the burial of Alexander King. Right, and on the first time that it rains, all this will be swept away. This does not hurt the stone in any way. Th that is a great, uh, a great tidbit of knowledge because if you're interested in uh, doing the same thing, this doesn't damage anything no. and, and it helps you identify. I mean, maybe there's a, a cemetery or a, a burial that you think might be your relative and you want to find out. Good tip. So this um, killed in action. Battle of Franklin. So this is old. This is Robert Bringhurst, the young man who's depicted on the Confederate statue or the Confederate monument in Greenwood. And he uh, died on the battlefield. He had eight bullet holes. But the remarkable thing was he was already on crutches from a previous battle, but he had an unused furlough in his pocket. He didn't have to be at that battle, but he went into battle anyway, he said, to cheer on the boys. But he died uh, in 1864 at the Battle of Franklin. Now, that is amazing. I mean, we see some Confederate soldiers buried here, but th is this the only one that we know that was killed in action? No, no, there's plenty around the cemetery. It, the, this speaks to the way that the the mindset of the people, honor was everything. This is something, This for him not to have gone into battle still walking, he would have probably seen as a dishonorable thing. Even though he couldn't fire his weapon if he had one, and this was the ultimate sacrifice. His parents are buried just behind us over here, and uh, this, is, this is the way that he would have been taught. And here are his parents, so yes. they were from Clarksville. They were actually from uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, this is a story of the man that was at like 24 years old, left Pennsylvania, came to Clarksville. His, his dog jumped off the boat and he jumped off the boat to, to get the dog and the steamboat left him behind. And then the people found out where he was from and said, oh, there's a young lady from your same part of Pennsylvania. Her name is Miss Julia and she is beautiful. He met her, he courted her and, this was and they Julia. married her. Mm -hmm. What a great Beautiful story. story. Yeah, he never found the dog though. Never <laughs> found, he could have cared. Oh, <laughs> this, that is a great story. Yes. So they are here and then their son that they were so proud of yes. is there. I mean, that is really heart-wrenching right. to hear that. We, we also have a lot of other Confederate uh, heroes here. The Josh Brown plot. Tell us about Josh Brown. Josh Brown was uh, from Clarksville. He was a businessman. Um, I believe he sold mercantile. He was in the mercantile business. And he went off with the other boys from Clarksville to fight in the war. And he became part of what is called a Coleman Scout. And these were scouts who would go out and find information. They were not spies, but they would go out and transfer secretly information uh, to keep the troop, uh, movements, troop and movements and so forth. And he was captured about the same time as Sam Davis, the boy hero of the Confederacy. He wasn't a boy, he was 21 years old, but they call him that. And he was actually in a jail cell in Pulaski next to Sam Davis. They knew each other very well, but because Sam didn't want him implicated, they acted like they didn't know each other. And uh, he, uh, Josh Brown actually gave Sam Davis uh, a meal, which was Sam Davis's last meal. He shared oh. his food with him and then watched as Sam Davis was taken off to be hanged. And we all know the story, as you say, of the boy hero of the Confederacy. Right. So there are so many stories. Carolyn, you know everything about this. Well. <laughs> and, and again, we are going to put on the screen an email address so that if you want to contact me, I will get Carolyn uh, to, to reach out to you because she has so much information. Uh, this is great. We're here at Riverview Cemetery, really very old place. Uh, we have some of the oldest. And to think that we have Valentine Severe. Right, that's a treasure. A and then heroes killed in action in the, in the Confederacy. And of course, we also have Clarksvillians from every walk of life buried In every here. war here. This is a great place. This is part of our history here in Clarksville. And of course, what we do on this show is history and heritage. 
Carolyn, thank you. Thank you. It's our history and our heritage.